here we are outside Noosa Marine. They are currently building a full carb shining catamaran. Uh, good morning everybody, my name is Peter Swazel and this is Julian Griffiths from Noosa Marine and we're here today to talk about Tony Longhurst's new boat. I don't, does it have a name yet? Uh, it's uh, possibly yeah, Kator. The previous one was Kato, Kato. so this is more the R version of Kato. 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 Oh, okay. So we now know who uh, it's for, it's for Tony Longhurst, and when did you start the build? We started on the 6th of January this year, so this year? 16, yes. So and we've been on six months. And it will be on the water when? January, hopefully next year, next year. so 12, roughly a 12 to 13 month build frame. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, uh, the designer is Jeff Shonning, and I imagine he's been up and down a few times to look at it? Yeah, he popped in he's uh, just once so far, um, he's hoping to come back a couple more times. Um, okay. Yeah, so it, it's a it's a custom design, so it's not on the portfolio of his designs because Tony requested some changes from the previous boat, um, and so yeah, that's why it, it, we come up with this project, and this design. And um, so it's a strip plank duracore with carbon skins. Yep, that's right. Yep, and uh, so the hulls are all all uh, strip planked over temporary frames um, with roughly. 50 mil to 100 mil planking, and uh, then a 400 gram carbon double biased on the outside with epoxy, all epoxy system, and then two extra layers of S glass below the waterline and up, up 900 on the outside for impact resistance. Okay, so on to um, just some of the boat details. It's going to have uh, electric propulsion. Who's providing that? Yeah, so um, Ocean Vault is supplying it. Um, they haven't been. They're not a new company or anything like that. They've been around for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, so um, you know we've um, we've taken made the decision that we want to go green and um, have this thing basically fully self-sufficient. Uh, it will have a. It is a hybrid system, what they call it. So it will have a generator, um, but mainly it'll be run off all solar. Well, just a little bit more on the strip planking with, mm. with the balsa core. It's um, standard balsa and um, the designers believe it will be lighter than using normal uh, foam. Yeah, that's right. Um, we can, can, can get away with using less laminates because it's a higher compression density of balsa. Um, so it's actually ingrained balsa with applied veneer on the outside, strip planked up and then, then glassed over. The panels, or bulkheads for instance, underwing, all our flatter panels are an ATL product, um, which is basically grain balsa with skins, glass skins put on the outside, made into flat panels. And they're all then computer cut out for us, um, nested and computer cut out, all joined together and all, all reinforced with unis and so on, whatnot where they have to go. And then, um, yeah, we'll put together. So what it does is basically, you know, there's a bit of the thing about people not liking balsa boats or anything, but you know, there's plenty of balsa boats out there that have been out there for 20, 30 years with not a problem at all. The trick is just keeping the water out of them. So, with today's technologies and what's going on, around, you know, now in, in, with with development with epoxies and and reinforcings, that a lot of our fittings and systems on the boat don't have any mechanical fastenings. So, there is actually not many mechanical fastenings go, that go in the boat. And if there is anything that goes through the boat or the hull or the bolster or anything like that, it's either replaced with a high density foam insert or a solid carbon plate. Uh, for instance, this boat here has got two skin fittings below the waterline on a 65 foot cruising, sort of come cruising fast cruiser boat. Mm. It's going to have a carbon rib. Is, are there anything Southern Spice um, doing anything special? Like that? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a carbon rig. We're going for a new inline furling boom, which, is a, which allows um, a fully battened main to still work um, and and a, a fully laminated main at, at that as well so it's a, it's we're going for southern spars carbon rig which is quite a, not, not an aerofoil not a rotating or anything like that just a single spreader we've gone for all composite rigging to keep the weight out we've gone for composite heads for foils to keep the weight out as well so basically where the money can be spent to save money, it's being spent, um, you know, to get this boat quite light and quite fast. Um, 
So the 3DI, North 3DI sales will be, um, you know, the lightest sale you can get, um, and hopefully the hopefully the best. <laughs> and uh, and the inline furling, because this boat has been set up for single-handed sailing, so the owner likes to basically just have a stress-free situation and not get his wife involved with doing much and just likes to do it all himself, keeps fit himself and likes just tuning and running around and sailing the boat himself. So it, everything, is base, it, it's, it's controlled. One person can sail this boat quite easily. It's got a bow thruster to help it, to help it dock um, and it's got the um, ocean bolt electrical systems. Actually, when it's sailing, they regenerate as well so if it's a cloudy windy day you know he's not getting much sun or anything like that it's they're basically regenerating the house bank and the battery bank for the boat and you mentioned a bit about weight do you have a on water weight for it yet um we're hoping around 12 ton okay yep. yeah that's what's on jeff's website 12 tons yes of yes yeah we'd like to come in a little bit lighter um obviously we, we build them quite efficiently this is our fourth big project of the size and um you know we sort of know all the little tricks and areas. Okay. Um, so, uh, the, uh, Tony's prior boats have been glass fibre, high modulus glass fibre, and yes. And now he's gone to carbon. Um, what, um, it's, why would you go to carbon? Um, it's more just to get a little bit more um, stiffness throughout the whole platform of the boat. Um, just it, you know. It just it's gonna it's gonna basically keep keep the rig stiff, keep the you know, the whole area, the whole platform is gonna be a huge advantage to make the boat perform better. You know, it's all, there's no loss in not loss in um, stiffness from you know, from the rigging or anything like that. So, so it's all the sails and everything will be pushed straight through into the platform on the boat which will make the boat go faster through the water. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> well then we look forward to the uh, launch in January in uh, yeah, hopefully January. January. Um, so uh, the boat's set up, set up. Uh, it's quite strong. It's a, basically a monocoque shell, which which is a, a whole big, like egg shell formed one big shell. It's got um, it's got bulkheads every meter to the fifteen hundred throughout the whole boat. It's got horizontal longitudinal webs going through the boat as well. One at the waterline, one at nine hundred above the waterline, where they are. So that, what that does is it forms um, in the front area, the front, from, for the front three metres back we've got four watertight sections plus the 450 mil sacrificial bows that, which are solid foam which go on because everybody knows that you hit each all corners of the boat so they're all beefed up um, and they're only sacrificial so if it hits a container or something out to sea or anything like that it's going to get no ingress it's not a structural part of the boat they can actually be taken straight off like a basically a bumper bar on your car like an impact resistance zone moving back then below the floors the floors are set at waterline level and they've got to form an I-beam right through the whole structure of the boat, right to the transom. So what that does is it's divided up into I-beam, then you've got your floor on top, and then you've got webs under that which divide it up into 900 sections. So it's completely sealed, there's no pipes, there's no plumbing, there's no electrical systems, nothing are going through, the, through that wall, below that floor. So what that basically, if they run at a reef, they hit some rocks, rip the bottom of the boat out or anything like that, the boat is fully able to still sail and float and keep the, peop keep the people safe and you know it's um, you always hear a ho shocking stories you know people sort of slipping boats and they're hearing creaking and groaning and putting bulk, you know stands in the wrong place and everything like that this boat can self self-sufficient self-supported wherever it wants to by any lifting point of the hull. Uh, aft end of Kator and uh, we're just looking at the transom and the hardtop and Julian will talk about some of the features of the boat. The main feature that you can see is um, the long waterline length and it, it, from here back, from the back beam back to the transoms, it's roughly over you know, three metres or more, um, which, you know, it's a huge advantage on the sailing boat. It's got good buoyancy, you know, no squatting its, squatting its tail in the water when it's sailing or anything. Um, it, you know, being a custom design one-off boat, and it's designed to suit the owner. The owner's done quite a lot of miles. You know, he likes to, to know, he, you know, he requested we need to step at this height to get out of the dinghy. 
you know, we need to step over the transoms to get, you know, in a marina, so we didn't want the combings too high. You see a lot of boats these days and their transoms are very plumb and, you know, it's impossible to get in out of a marina. So these are things that have all been thought out, customised to suit and, and you know, make it, make it a good boat. And whereabouts will the rudder? So the, rudder's, the rudder's about 1500, so if you look, uh, there's a rudder tube hanging out here, so behind oh, yes. that is a full watertight section, centre webs and strengthened all up. The rudder's also got a shelf going through as well, supporting the top part, um, and then it'll be emergency section on top that can steer as well. Um, is that hydraulic steering or yeah, electric hydraulic steering? steering on this one. It's very hard to get all the linkages together with, um, with dy the Dynex or, you know, the, the rope rigging, so um, it's a pretty pretty good system and you get a quite a good feel back with hydraulics these days through all their, through all their block valves and so on, so mm -hmm. it works a treat. Right, um, so it was, it was at the owner's request, you know, that they, they do a lot of cruising in rough conditions, he does a lot of kiteboarding, so he's going where it's windy sections, he kiteboards off the back of the boat. So he, they wanted, they want, he wanted a good platform they can, where he can set up his kiteboard, jump off and go kiteboarding. Um, in a lot of chop as well, so, and then he had to get in his dinghy and out off his dinghy in a lot of chop, so the steps, and also I go swimming, jump out of the water when he's swimming and so, so forth. And another one is a major one is when he's in a marina, stepping over the back of the combing onto the boat without having, you know, with groceries and throwing the dog on board and all that sort of stuff, that it's nice and practical and easy, not having to sort of lose the wife going down between the boat and the jetty. Mm -hmm. um, and the, you know, a main thing also is we've got the davits going off the back beam. And um, a, lot of, a lot of issues boats have is that's trying to pull the boat, pull their dinghy up in rough conditions and whatnot. And we designed this one where the davits will go on that he can actually pull the boat up himself in the dinghy. So he just goes up, clips on and pulls himself up straight away. He doesn't have to then click the dinghy off. He doesn't have to get out of the boat and then go and put it on a winch and pull the boat up or have someone else doing it. So again, it's all single-handed one person operation mm -hmm. which is you know huge advantage when you're out in choppy conditions you know meter of swell and chop and stuff like that works now here in the uh in the cockpit area and it's um all black very dark <laughs> and uh so we need to turn some lights on and and julian will talk about um some of the things about in in this cockpit um well uh, it's a single helm for a multi hull which uh a lot of people are divided 50 50. Um, personally I like twin helm, uh, I like to be out in the elements and see where I'm going and the exhilaration but you know this boat is spending a lot of its time doing a lot of long miles and so it'll be on autopilot quite a lot of the time so that's fine but there is the single helm here, he sticks his head up through the top, it's got a nice covered sliding hatch and you can see all four points of the boat from it anyway. Uh, it'll have a, have a all it'll have is be an electric winch button there which winds up the mast and that's it, winds up the sail, sorry, and that's about it. Um, um, one huge advantage you can see in this cockpit is that it's designed with this massive big over cabin overhang. So we're in Queensland in the tropics going around the Pacific, it's fully sheltered all the time. So this boat won't have an indoor table at all. It'll have its table out the back here, around its back seating area. So most of the time, they're always outside. Even with its howling gale, pouring down rain, it's fully protected. You know, we've lifted the seats up so the seats don't get their cushions wet. For instance, they're raised so no water can run back and wet them. It's got clear curtains that go around the sides and finish off there so no water can get in. Um, and the cushions never come off this seat, always dry. It's got a shade cloth that comes down the back and goes across the back, and that stops a lot of the spray and mist coming in. Um, another big thing you can see is this big box at the back here. Um, and basically it's what's called a toy box. It keeps all his stand-up paddle boards in there. They, got, they carry two. They carry a few of his kite boards in there. They've got the hose. They've got a few brooms. They've got their rubbish bag and whatnot and so on. So it's basically a really good spot on a boat where you see people with stand-up paddle boards down the sides. You know, adding windage. You know, and they, you know, starting to look like a bit of a, you know, bit of a, um, you know, op shop style of look. So you know, it keeps a boat nice and tidy. Very practical. Um, 
So over here on this side is a big, big day bed. Where someone's got their head under there. Uh, that'll be access down into the engine room for the generator to pop in. We've got gas bottles, fuel tank. And that's, that is like you slide there and just look out the back. View, you know, view. Um, these are sliding opening windows. This is a bifold door, opens right up. These beams here supporting the roof. That's all our solar panel wires will come down into them. They've got down lights in them our speakers in them, so they act as a stiffener, run our wires, lights, speakers and so on, so no lobby fed and painted, no lining or anything goes in the back here at all, so keep the weight down, so a little bit of sanding upside down, but that won't hurt us. Um, yeah. So then we can move along into the saloon? In the saloon area, as you can see the main six hatches up the front, they open right up, heaps of ventilation in and they can stay open when it's raining as well because it's got an overhang out in the front which gives basically the boat heaps of air and breeze when they're up in the tropics and so on. Here we've got a U-shaped U-shaped galley on the port side massive big day bed come you know for the sea berth and whatnot around here lounging area little coffee table um, and then you've got steps down in the middle sections down into the hulls where we've got a bathroom on each side in the house. We've got a little um, TV area over here with all our electronics behind the helm. And then on this side here, next to the bulkhead, we've got a uh, fridge freezer, custom made fridge freezer by ISA, a company in Brisbane, which custom built them to suit your needs and basically one of the best investments that anybody could ever have in refrigeration. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> and the galley's up or yeah, down? Galley, no, galley's here. U-shaped okay. galley, uh, 900 high. Mm -hmm. Again, custom made to suit the owners what she wants. You know, so we make the cupboards to suit Tupperware containers that you can buy off the shelf. All the cups, you know. So it's, again, all thought out, you know, um, bins in the top. A little bit of expense and weight for weight on top we go for Corin, very durable, very practical um, and that's basically where we, you know, where the weight, most weight of the boat will be is in, it will look on a Corian bench top. Okay. So you can see down there um, uh, our dagger boards go right through, um, you can see the sealed floor around it all, centre webs divided up into four, uh, one, two, three, four different sections are underneath that floor there. Um, where the cases go through the floor, we take out 300 mil of core back to bare carbon, put the, car put the case through, glass the case to that bare carbon and build it up to about 8 mil of solid carbon, then backfill it with solid fibre and chop fibre and chop carbon, and then we put three layers of carbon on the outside of that as well. And that also has a, a knee gusset tapering off behind it as well for impact assistance. Um, but talking about the boards, the boards have also got a sacrificial 300mm tip on the bottom that snap off or break hopefully if they do ever hit anything. And they're on an incline? Uh, they're put on an angle um, just to get the balance point right on the, on the, for sailing abilities and they're actually they are plumb. They're not. They're not canned in or out or anything. No, they're just directly down. Yep. Now the casing's on the tilt. Angled aft. Angled aft. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's basically to get the centre of F. So when the board's fully down, the centre of F to match the centre of F. Nothing to do with the performance of the board. Just a simple weight nah. configuration. Yes. Yep. 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 It just means that things don't get stuck on it as easy as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's, I mean, you could put them, you could put it vertical and move the whole thing back, but, um, you know, to work out with the layouts and so on like that, you know, it, it, um, it works quite well. It ties the top of the case very tight to a bulkhead as well for structural purposes. From aft, through that, back to, through that door down there, from aft is, is the engine room where the master uh, ocean bolt system will go. We've got... Uh, the battery banks will go below the floor, the motor will go below the floor and we'll just have a generator there. So you walk straight in, that'll basically be a, just an empty workspace, empty room, there's no beds, there's nothing in it, it'll be, work, it'll be a sort of like a laundry. You won't even see the batteries, you won't even see the motor, you know, so that's a... That's a lithium a, batteries? Lithium batteries, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. yep. so Where's the, the battery bank going, on this other side? No, the battery banks are in front of the motor under the oh, floor. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm. 
Yeah, so weights, weights forward, weight central. Um, you know, it, so we've, you know, Tony's a racing car driver, so you know he's built. He knows what balance of, of things and so forth. So you know, it, it, everything is centred. Uh, with the um, hello, we're here in the saloon of uh, Kate Hall, and I'm introducing Claude from Ocean Vault, and he's going to speak a little bit about the uh, lithium battery and the electric propulsion system. Well, as you gather from speaking with Julian, the main challenge on this boat was weight. It was very important to come up with a system that is a full electric system, including the battery, was lighter than the diesel equivalent, and we have been able to do that. So uh, by using uh, the ocean volt motor, it was um, very light in itself, but also we have the lithium battery where, as we know, it's a big advantage to use the lithium battery. So we have a very light system, who is actually lighter than the diesel. So, and give the same performance for a boat like this uh, of um, a diesel motor. And the added advantage is then the boat will be also solar driven. So the main source of power will be from the sun. So there's a very large uh, solar system on the boat. We'll be giving us, we expect, about four and a half knots straight from the sun. So that is, you know, a very big advantage in comparison to a normal diesel motor. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, the motor, they are two uh, 15 kilowatt motor. So basically, we are, they are equivalent to maybe a 40 to 50 uh, horsepower uh, diesel motor. So that's a, and uh, the battery bank is actually quite interesting. It's 16 kilowatt with uh, only 200 kilo. So the battery has. People always refer to the weight of, um, you know, the, in, an electric system as being very heavy. It is not in this case. It's very light. So as I said before, it's lighter than the diesel motor. And with those size batteries, uh, power system, what boat speed do you think will be? Well, we are expecting to have nine and a half to ten knot as a maximum speed, and the cruising speed will be probably between you know six to seven knot as for the long distance um, you know, cruising. There is also a generator; it is a relatively small generator on board, and um, and that will give uh, basically it it is like an added if you want uh, you know give extra extra. Uh, range to have the generator, it's a range extender, but we feel that it will not be used very much. It will be, you know, very much a, a solar boat. And the solar panels, are they flexible or rigid? Yes, they actually, this is one interesting point on this boat, it is built in, so they are custom built to fit the boat. Uh, I think uh, Julian might confirm that because we're still discussing that, but uh, it is to be fitted on the top, and so this, as much as can be, and completely built in, so a custom built solar panel to fit the boat. So it was flexible, obviously. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm. And there was no thought of putting a wind generator in as well? Uh, no. Ma. Ma. So uh, I feel then the solar will be plenty. Uh, I would be very, very surprised if that boat used the generator in at any, any time. It would be very the, the other occasion where it would come in. Uh, but probably most of the time the boat will be self-sufficient from the sun. Okay. Hi Claude, we're on now on the foredeck mm -hmm. of the Kator and we're just going to talk about the solar panels which will be flexible yep. and they're going to be uh, built in and laminated to the roof of the boat. Mm -hmm. Would you like to talk a bit more about yeah, that? Yes, so basically uh, as you can see this very large area and so we are trying to put as much solar as, as possible in that area and the panel art so it will be glue into the deck and uh, have a non-skid uh, finish to it. So basically that will be part of the, of the boat when it's complete. You will see the solar, but it will be kind of built in. Durable to walk on. Yes. Non-skid, it's got a non-skid finish on the outside of it, so you can walk on them, you can, you know, drop things on them. You know, they're, they're very durable and it's optimizing maximum area. And during an ordinary day, what sort of power do you think is going to charge? Well, we don't know exactly. They are making the panel at the moment, so or actually doing the planning. So we are trying to maximize it to see as, as much as possible. But it will be very large. Mm. Yes. So. Yeah. Yes. 
They're all about 100, 125 each panel, and we're going to end up with, you know, we're going to end up with um, over 24 panels on the top, as in one theoretically or more. That's I'm doing the math there. Four or five kilowatts. Four kilowatts. Yeah, it's, it's four kilowatt. Nearly yeah, system. that'll run a that'll run a house with six or seven people in it. Mm. Yes. But the interesting point is the speed then it will develop. So we'll yeah. get or four to five knot straight from the panel mm -hmm. in a sunny day, obviously, mm -hmm. which is quite exciting on a mm -hmm. boat of that size. Well, it won't take much to drive this. Well, no, don't. That, that no, they don't. I mean, point. these boats are doing ten knots in seven knots of sailing breeze. Mm -hmm. So uh, the oval four beam itself is a strip length composite four beam, uh, Oregon core for the density and the stiffness uh, with seven layers of uni and double biased on each side of it in and out uh, with a centre web and then glued or vacuum bagged, glued together um, and then put into the hulls, slotted over a bulkhead and glass and glued into the hulls. So very, very stiff, weighs around 180 kilos and then that's put in first then the four stay fitting is put on the centre piece. Again, the um, 20 layers of 1,000 gram uni is wrapped around that and around the whole beam and around the pin. And then the centre prodder itself is slotted over that with the top of it off, slotted over glassed on, and then the top's fitted last. And then that's got also five layers of uni on each corner, giving it strength and structure. At the very end, this boat's not having a spinnaker. It will be set up for a spinnaker, but we're not having one. It's a cruising boat, fast cruising boat, so the wind's always forward a little bit of the beam so that you're having a nice big screecher. And it, on the end of the point there where the screecher comes off, there will be wires holding the end of the prodder down as well to the hull. Uh, and then obviously nets in the middle and net, a triangulated net out the front as well. Yeah. Um, that's it, what you see here on the deck, nothing else is going on except the nets, ankle inches underneath, underneath of the deck. Uh, nothing on the deck up forward there. Water tanks are in the centre section here. We've got 1,990 uh, litres of fresh water, plus a water maker going on board. Um, Harkin deck, deck hardware fit out. Um, a lot of the blocks are all going to be lashed on. Blocks for high loads. Um, and weight. Um, so who's hardware are you using? Harkin. Harkin. Harkin hardware. Um, uh, Harkin winches. We've got what two... 60s, 65 to 70s, 70s and 60s. Okay. Uh, they are. Um, all the blocks are 125 mil blocks. Yep. I'm assuming you've got a self-tackery somewhere. Self-tacker truck going just up on top here in front of the mast base and that's 3.6 metres wide. Um, just a straight track set, set up at 40 degrees up, 40 percent up the luff, um, and so it'll be set at the set it when he wants to tack at the maximum point. It doesn't have to be curved or anything because as you go through a tack, then it becomes looser anyway, and then tightens back up as you on the other tack. We had a curved one on the previous boat, and it actually stood up and stuck up, and it wasn't an eyesore; it was a piece of art, I thought. <laughs> but uh, you'd like to try and get it down lower and just keep the boat as slick and as as and smooth as looking as possible. Yeah. Harkin have just, well, in the last few years, have brought out a reverse motorised winch. Yeah. Well. And uh, so you can trim it by just touching a button as against leaving the sheet off and easing it. Yeah. You haven't thought about going no. on that track at all? No. No, because if you lose your power or something happens or it overrides or anything like that, it's, we're, just, we're just happy to uh, manually just sail the boat. Okay. Yep. Mm. We're, um, we're just, simple things in life are often the best on this one. We're just simplifying this boat from the last boat. Mm. Les is going in it. Here we are at the bow of Kator and uh, we can see that it's uh, very clean. Uh, no beams and protrusions underneath the boat and um, Julia can, Julian can talk to us a little bit more about uh, um, this area. Yep. The advantage of this boat is its um, underwing clearance is, is a uh, metre which is high, quite high, um, for slamming and so forth for the boat this size. The waterline depth on this boat is about a metre, that's to the bottom of the rudders, the fixed rudders, obviously. Um, and the boards also stick the same, same length 
as the rudders below the bottom of the boat. So they're a sacri sacrificial piece if it was to hit anything or you hit your boards first. Um, the underwing is great. Nice clean underwing, no beams or anything, no stiffeners. Which it gives a nice, clean, efficient look. Easily for the boat to be slipped and so forth on, on travel lifts and whatnot, but also just resistance and drag and so forth underneath the boat. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it really. <laughs> for two people, huge advantage. So it's a pop down bow thruster. Um, and it, you know, it gives it hu makes a huge advantage with the, with the twin motors to, to dock the boat. Are we the battle? Yeah. Well, I mean, this boat is this boat is strip planked. The hulls are strip planked up to up to the deck level and up to the gunnel, and from the gunnel, the side decks are all strip planked. Um, they need to give the curve, curved, nice style of boat, looking boat. The rest of the sections are flat panel, um, and which come computer cut, so it's all designed computer cut. It basically gives a, a speed, quite a speedy process to build the boat, and a good way to build a one-off boat. It's not, you know, because you can customise it and make it so you're not stuck with one mould. It's not going to, you know, a mouldy boat which can date, and they've got to keep updating their moulds all the time. You know, we, we're up with the latest design and fashions and trends in this design of this boat.